This program is made possible by the friends and partners of Stevenson Ministries and the Houston Faith Church family. You know, the truth is that every human has a really a God-shaped void uh, in their life uh, that only God can fill. And even once we believe in Him and receive Him, really that God-shaped place that only God can fill, it remains. That never changes. And so in this relationship with Him, as, we, as we're learning of Him and growing in Him, Really, we have to continue to do just that, to continue to want to know Him more, to continue to go further in Him. Uh, that, that place in us, really in our heart, we want it to be filled with the capacity, the capacity so much of God that really we can sense Him and that we can live out of the Spirit of God that is within us. That's what we desire. And in order to do that, really, we have to have an intimate relationship with the Lord. We have to have an intimate relationship with the Lord. Oh, to be a child of God. Hallelujah. To be a friend of God. The glory of having a relationship, a love relationship with the Lord. Again, the, the world is looking for love. Everyone, everyone is searching for love because we're created by God with that place in us. To be loved and to give love. But it's only with God that that comes about. And so this relationship, this love relationship with the Lord, it's just everything. And I'm so grateful for it. Turn with me in Philippians chapter 3 in verse 10. Now, if you have your regular Bible, that's fine. You can read along. But I'm going to read tonight out of the Amplified Classic. So if you do have an electronic Bible and you can get to different versions, that would be the version that you would be looking for here. But this is the Apostle Paul that wrote this uh, in Philippians here. Now he wrote this when he uh, was toward, I would say, the latter end of his ministry. He was certainly not in the beginning stages. So he had seen much. He had experienced much. He had learned much. He had much revelation at this time. When he wrote this, and he said this, he said, For my determined purpose is that I may know him. Paul had a determined purpose. You know, everybody is looking for their purpose, looking for their purpose. Well, here you go, right here. Tonight, right here. This can be your life, your life application scripture. To have a determined purpose, no matter how long you've known the Lord, no matter how long you've been serving the Lord, no matter how much you think that you've seen, a determined purpose Paul had that I may know Him, that I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with Him. Perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of His person more strongly and more clearly, and that I may in that same way come to know the power that is outflowing from His resurrection, which it exerts over believers, and that I may so share His sufferings as to be continually transformed in spirit into His likeness. Hallelujah. Paul had a determined purpose of knowing the Lord. Not just knowing about the Lord, but knowing the Lord personally, very up close, very intimately. That we would know the person of God. God is a person. And I know we know this, but yet sometimes I think when we go, when we go to Him, it's about, it's about the concept of who He is. He's a person. And we can actually know Him as a person. Recognize things about Him. Perceive Him. Understand in a very deep, in a very intimate way. That was why, you know, uh, David said in himself, he said, The deep in me cries out to the deep in the Lord. You know, really, as, as believers, we're not called to live in a shallow place with the Lord. We're not called to just meet Him, meet him in a one-time encounter and then that's it. We're intended to grow deeper and deeper and know more and more and understand Him and see Him more clearly and more deeply as we go. That's what an intimate relationship with the Lord does. And it says, and in that same way, we're to know His power. That's very interesting, isn't it? We're to know power intimately. We're to know power deeply. 
We're to be able to recognize power, understand the power of God. This is what it is to have an intimate relationship with the Lord. And so tonight I want to talk a little bit about about intimacy with the Lord. You know, the truth is, is that really we positionally, we are one with him. The Bible is very clear about that. And to be one with someone or to be one uh, certainly uh, depicts a closeness, uh, a, a very connectedness. But that's a positional truth. And really the truth is that we need, re- we need revelation and continual revelation how we are one with God. How He is always with us, within us. Uh, so that we don't compartmentalize our life and at times should step in and step out. Really, we're to live with God in a very close manner at all times. In Matthew 16, you don't have to turn there, but this is the account in verses 13 through 19, uh, where Jesus was walking with his disciples and he began to talk to them and he began to say to them, who do people say I am? You know, he was asking about uh, what's it said about him? Who, who do people really think he is? What he was looking for was the revelation Uh, And all of a sudden he said to them, he said, well, who do you say that I am? And we know that Peter answered him and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. It was at that moment that the identity of who Jesus was, was first declared into the earth. That was very significant. God was looking for that revelation where a man in the earth would know who Jesus was and declare that out of his mouth. And when he made that declaration, the Lord turned around and said to him that that revelation didn't come from flesh and blood, but from God the Father in heaven. And then he began to say to him that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Peter, that word Peter is actually comes from the word Petros with a small p, and it means a piece of the rock. Because Jesus is Petra, capital P, the rock. We know that Jesus is referred to as the rock. And so in this instance, what was happening is that as soon as Peter declared the identity of Jesus, Jesus turned right around and declared Peter, who represents all believers, as being in Christ, as being a part of the rock. And I remember, you know, I've preached on this for years and studied this and the revelation, the oneness, how, how that means that we are in Christ, the realities of us, a life in Christ. Not, not just with Christ, but in Christ. And then one day I was, just, I was just reading this scripture and the Lord told me this. He said that when Jesus heard Peter declare his identity, because we are one, Jesus was required to declare Peter's identity because we're inseparable. Peter was not allowed to declare in the earth who Jesus was without Jesus declaring who his disciples were because we are totally one. We are inseparable. We need a revelation of that. Not not just some scriptures in the book, not just a concept, a revelation that we are in Him, that we are one with Him. Uh, John 17 talks about that we are one with Him, that we are one in Him. So there is this oneness positionally as God sees it and that we need revelation of. So being, a, being one, of course, denotes in- intimacy. And so I want to live, I know you want to live, we should want to live in that intimate place of being one with the Lord. Now when I say intimate and intimacy, don't think of it in the terms of the world. The world has taken that term, intimate and intimacy, and turned it into a sexual term. But that's not the kind of intimacy I'm talking about. Paul said he wanted to be, he wanted to intimately, become intimately more acquainted with the Lord. So let me just give you a definition of what that word really intimate or intimacy is really talking about. It's really talking about uh, a closeness. It's talking about close familiarity or friendship. It's talking about a close association, a close relationship. Uh, It's talking about... uh, be belonging, it's talking about being inseparable, it's talking about being near, it's talking about togetherness, companionship, camaraderie. It's talking about having a warm affection and warm feelings. 
in the sense of, of in here toward uh, one another. Another definition is it's a close, familiar, and usually affectionate and loving relationship, personal relationship with someone. It's a close association with something by detailed knowledge or a close observation or a deep understanding. It's uh, something of a personal or a private nature. You know, this relationship that we have with God, it's, it's very, it's very uh, in one sense, we do it publicly together in the assembly when we come together, but it's also very private, this relationship that we have with the Lord, the closeness. It's a showing a close union or, or a, a, a connection, a, a mixture uh, of something. And so we're to be intimate. We're to have an intimate, very up close and personal relationship with the Lord. And really the desire to know Him in an intimate way, in a very close way, where we're really inseparable, should be the cry of our heart. It should be our determined purpose. It should be something that we're going after continually, continually. And when I think of the, uh, of the Lord just years ago said this to me. I, I was studying one time on intimacy. And, and when I said intimacy, he said this to me. He said, into me see. And so when we're thinking of intimacy, we're talking about into a place to be able to see into the Lord. He sees into us. He knows us intimately. He designed us. He made us. When we were yet not even formed in our mother's womb, he already knew us. So he knows us. He knows the depths of us. He knows the places that we try to hide. He knows the things that we try to close off. He knows them, yet many times he won't, he won't enter into them or invade them unless he's invited. Because that's the, that's the loving nature of a, of a good father. But he does know us intimately, and we're to know him in the same way. Wow. We're not to know him just as, as the God of the book. We're to experience a very close and a very intimate relationship into me see. Hallelujah. So I want to see the Lord. We're not just really, we're not to just fill up on information. We have to move from the place of, of information into revelation where we're not just compre comprehending things with our mind, but we're actually experiencing them with our person. We should be experiencing God spirit to spirit. Just like when you sit across from someone and you can experience them and you can, you can hear their heart and you can sense their nature and partake of things of their character. This is how it's supposed to be with God. This, this exchange of our life for His life and this intimate place that we're to have with Him. And so again, positionally, we know that we're close to the Lord, but yet there, there seems to be an aspect uh, of this where we are to draw near to the Lord. We have to purpose to, Paul purposed, his determined purpose was to become more intimate. How would he do that? By, uh, by pursuing being closer. Many New Testament scriptures talk about that we draw near. We draw near in, in a full assurance. There's all kinds of New Testament scriptures. One of my favorite, uh, turn with me over to James chapter 4. And here I'm going to be out of the New King James uh, Bible. But I like this one just to talk about tonight. James chapter 4, it says, Draw near to God and He will draw near to you. So there is something about, even though we're one with Him and we know that that's positionally true, there is something about putting our affections in the right place. There's something about putting our attentions toward Him. Uh, there's something about at times acknowledging. I, I learned long ago in prayer because we live with God and we know that God is there and we know all kinds of scriptures and all kinds of praying. Sometimes we just shoot out and start praying. But no, did we draw near to God? Did we take a moment in our heart to purpose to draw near to the Lord, the one with whom now we're going to speak or or, or have conversation with. And so we draw near to him. And then it says, and he draws near to us. 
as we draw near to Him, the more we draw near, the nearer we get to Him and the closer He comes to us. Hallelujah. God comes close. He's not just far off. He's not just God in heaven. He's God that comes close. If we will draw near to Him, He will draw near to us. That means the closer we are to Him, the more of Him that we will know, the more of Him that we will understand, the more intimacy that we will have, the more of Him that we will see. So many people crying out for more and more and more of God, but are we drawing near? Are we making time to draw near? The closer, the more, the closer we get to the Him, the more of Him that we experience. And really, every time we open up our hearts and spirit to spirit, we make that connection, uh, we get closer and closer. And so this is why sometimes, maybe you've heard me say this. If you haven't heard me say it, you should hear me say it. Because here in the corporate assembly, When we're coming here, we're not just coming to have service. We're not just coming to sit in our chair and hear a message. We're not just coming here to gather some information. Every time we come in the assembly, we're coming with a purpose, and it is to encounter God. It is to meet with God. It is to have a close and personal uh, encounter with Him through His Word, through His Spirit, through the people of God. And so when we come in the church service, we need to come and get fully in. I mean, we need to participate. I mean, the minute we walk in, this is it. I'm greeting the people of God, the people who are carriers of God's spirit. Now I'm having a relationship with God through the people of God. The minute I walk in the door, I'm I'm, I'm purposing to open my heart to connect. Do you know that things can happen to you just as you're greeting people? You do realize that, right? I told a testimony. This is just my testimony because it's testimony that I have. But I'm sure a lot of you have them. On two different Wednesday night services, just in greeting someone. I just wasn't greeting someone and hugging them, coming to find out later that I did not know they were sick or had something wrong. But in the greeting and the hugging, no prayer was not made. No call upon Jesus was made. No command of healing was made. But in that just exchange of heart to heart, come on, sister, heart to heart, yes, heart to heart, healing happened. You know what? In that moment, we encountered a relationship with God. And so we come in in the greeting time and then in the worship time. The worship time is not just to look up and see some words up there and try to follow along. The worship time is to open up our heart, hallelujah, to worship God, to become intimate with Him, to come into His presence, to experience Him. That's how we draw near, Lord. I'm here. The worship, the worship is made for Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's not about the right sound, the right notes. It's not about the right words. It's just about connecting with Him. And then we go from the worship to the giving time, which is so spiritual, heart to heart. As we open our heart in giving and we're worshiping the Lord with our tithes and our offerings and our substance, what's happening? Now we've drawn near in greeting. Now we've drawn near in worship. Now we're drawing, well, what's happening? We're getting nearer and nearer and nearer. And that's why I always tell you, don't come in here and don't participate in something. Don't check out when the worship happens because I'm not really a worshiper and I'm just here for the, I like to hear the word. Don't check out when that giving is happening. This is time for us to continue to press in and to draw close to the Lord. Then the message and the ministry. And and at that point, we should be, it's a continual movement of drawing nearer and nearer. And you know what's happening? As we're drawing nearer, do you know what's happening? The Lord is drawing nearer to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is why it's so wonderful to do this together in the assembly that we can really encounter the Lord. Hallelujah. And so the question is, are, are we making time to, to be intimate with the Lord? Or are we making time to draw near? Really where we can get into the Spirit, come before the Lord. Think of God. We're, we're to know the wonders of His person. Paul said that. 
If he said that, that means that we can have that to really know the wonders of God's person intimately. To know them is to experience them. And so I was thinking of, about, you know, how close to the Lord do we really want to be? How close do we really want to be? Because there's always, that, there's always something of a sacrifice of, of ourselves. You did notice that it does say we draw near and then he draws near. So the Lord, even though he loves us, he desires us. The Bible says he yearns for us jealously. He yearns for us intensely. I mean, every, every moment when you wake up, the Lord is saying, here I am, here I am. I want to be with you. I want to spend time with you. I want to talk to you. I want to love you today. I want to show you something of myself today. He's right there, but he waits. He waits. How close to the Lord do we really want to be? How close do we really want to be? And really, if we think about the Lord and who He is and what comes from a relationship with Him, that all the peace that we're looking for comes from that relationship, that all the joy that we're looking far comes from that relationship. And so it seems so many times we're, we're seeming like we're missing out on these things of the Lord and we're like, Lord, like it's something of the Lord, but maybe it's just that we need to get closer. Maybe it's just that we need desire to be closer. I was thinking of, of Niagara Falls. Have any of you ever been to Niagara Falls? It's a beautiful place. You know, you can see it from the American side and the Canadian side. And I've seen it from the Canadian side, which I heard is is a prettier view than, than America, but I haven't seen the American side, so I can't really say. But you know, Niagara Falls is just like, when you see Niagara Falls, like, like it's like the wow factor, like the magnitude of it, like the beauty of it, like, like the power of it. But, but the question is, you know, do you really, how much of Niagara Falls do you really want to see or do you really want to experience, you know? So when we got there, we had a hotel and uh, it was a beautiful hotel, and in our room you could open up, the, they had these huge curtains, and you could open up the curtains, and you could see the water from the hotel. And it, I mean, it was wonderful. You know, I could see, I, you could see the water. If, if you listen kind of, you know, if you got kind of close to the window, you could hear, because the, the fall, the magnitude of the fall, the power of the fall, you could hear some of that. You could see, you know, but, but it was a, from a distance. I was seeing this and experiencing this from a distance. And I was thinking, wow, you know, that's, that's really pretty. But then the next day, when the day came, they had an observation tower. And so we left the hotel room because I wanted to get closer. I wanted to experience something more of Niagara Falls than just the window, just the way back in the distance. And so I went to the observation tower. And from the observation tower, you're a lot closer I got closer to the falls. And what happened when I got closer was I could see better. I could see more about how, how the waters were falling and cascading. I could hear the sound. The so I love the sound of water. Just the sound of that, from the power. You could just, in a much greater way than when I was just in my hotel, even though the view was, you know, kind of pretty. Boy, being a, a, just that, that, that degree of how much I had come closer made such a difference in what I could hear of that waterfall, of what I could see of that waterfall. I could, as, as the wind was blowing, sometimes you'd get a little mist, you know, you know, it wouldn't be like heavy or anything, but you'd get a little mist, you know? But then they said that you could take a boat and there's a boat called the Maid of the Mist. And the boat actually, you get on the boat and what they say is they get you the closest to the waterfall that can possibly, that you can possibly get. It's like any closer than that and you would be overtaken. And so I'm all for it, man. I'm, I mean, I'm all, we're in line. We've got the tickets paid. Because why? Because I want to experience it. The more I saw of it, the more I wanted to see of it, the more I wanted to hear, the more I wanted to fully experience everything about that waterfall. And so we got on the boat and they actually give you rain uh, coats. So you have to put on rain coats and you got your thing. And I'm thinking, oh, this is wonderful. And you go out on that boat and you get way close. I mean, at one point you're like, you're like, it's like, wow. And what I experienced at that point just the, the power of the sound of God's creation. 
and the beauty of it. Wow. And the magnitude of it. It was, it was breathtaking. And then we were just drenched. We were drenched. I mean, the water. We were so close to just the water falling and hitting and spraying everywhere, but I didn't care. Oh, just my arms were, oh, I was like, wow, this is wonderful. Hair drenched. Come on. When are we going to decide that we want to be drenched from what flows from God? Come on, it's not good enough to just have a shallow relationship. It's not good enough to just come a little ways. God wants us to come all the way. Come on, don't we want to be, don't we want to be drenched in His Spirit? Come on, don't we want to be soaked in His presence? Come on, don't we, we want to be saturated in His love? Come on, don't we want to see into Him so intimately and deeply the wonders The wonders of the God who created all things. Wow, that we can do that if we come close. We come close. The Lord just wants us to come close. See, when I got close enough, when I got as close as I could, then I I, I felt the full effects. the The full sound effect, the full seeing effect. And the effect of what came as a result of being in that, in that position. There's so much of God. There's so much of Him. So much of Him it seems like we've only scratched the surface. The Bible says that, 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 the, that the riches and the, and the, the wisdom of God, it, it's, it's, it's infa- unfathomable. It's like we never can exhaust the end of who He is. We, we can never exhaust the ends of his love, the width and the depth and the length and the height of his love. We can never exhaust that. So we have to keep coming closer and keep coming closer and keep coming closer. The deep in us crying out to the deep in God. We have to keep pursuing with a determined purpose to get closer to him so that his love can flow freely, so that his grace can flow freely, so that his power can touch us. Many times, you know, we we come and we're needing something from God, but yet really honestly, we're so far from the power. We're so far from the power. We have to come close to God. If we will draw near, he will. He will. It's a promise. If we draw near, he draws near. But it's not just a one-time thing. It's an an everyday occurrence. It's in our private life. It's in the corporate place. We need to draw nearer. If we want to experience more, we need to draw nearer to the Lord. We need to come closer. We need to decide that this is something that He is what we are after at all cost. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so we do this by faith. We do this by faith. We do it by not by a feeling or not by hoping. We have to know that the Bible says that if we will come near to Him, that He will draw near to us. And we have to do it by faith. The Lord did make a way for us to get close to Him, to come close to Him, and it's by faith. And that's why, that's why uh, turn with me, let me just give you a scripture here. Galatians 3. Chapter 5, it's with our faith that we connect to the Lord. It's with our faith that we draw near to the Lord, that we get close to the Lord. You know, we're always talking about being faith people. But uh, is everybody turning there? Galatians 3, 5. Everybody look at me. Being faith people is more than using your faith to get something from God. I'll say it again. Being faith people is more than just using your faith to get something from God. We're supposed to be using our faith to draw near to the Lord. And sometimes we, you know, Him giving us, Him something coming, that's just a byproduct for me. That's just a byproduct. But it's more about us us coming to Him because we love Him, because we desire Him, because we set our affections upon Him, because we want to worship Him, adore Him. 
So we need, there's times we need to come to him, not, not with a hand of what I'm going to use my faith to get something from you, but I'm coming just to draw near because I just want to see you. Lord, I just want to see you, the beauty of your holiness. Lord, I just want to see you, the, the majesty of your glory. So we're to come near. Galatians 3, 5, it says, Therefore he, that meaning God, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? How does he supply the Spirit? How does he, how does he connect with us? How does he uh, reveal himself? How does he come near us? It's by faith. And so it does take our faith to know the Lord, to experience Him and all that He is. And that's why this life of faith is so important. It's why we talk about faith all the time and why we preach faith all the time. It's why we should know faith. We have, we have to have faith. We have to use our faith. We have to grow our faith. We have to exercise our faith. And we have to exercise it toward the right things. Again, not just always getting something, but exercise our faith in drawing near to the Lord. Exercise our faith in hearing the voice of God. Exercise our faith in experiencing, being able to come into His presence, being able to get in the Spirit. It is important to be able to get in the Spirit. We have to do that by faith. If we don't believe that we can do it, we will never do it. We have to believe it before we do it. So faith is this, this just, it's an exciting life. It's a, it's a life with God. It's a life of knowing God. It's a life of, of experiencing God, of partaking uh, of God. It's a life of partnering with God. It's a life of, um, of doing the works of Jesus, being with Him, working with Him. Uh, maybe since Pastor Jay was just here, did you enjoy Pastor Jay being here? Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. We had several people that got healed a Sunday night. Sophia has a testimony. Was it your back? Her back got healed. Praise the Lord. Mary Lou had a testimony. She just told me something in her groin. I mean, it was so bad she could barely move. Praise the Lord. She got healed on Sunday night. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So since I'm talking about our faith, I'm talking about our faith in relation to us being intimate and having a very up close and personal relationship with the Lord. Maybe I should tell Pastor Jay's story Y'all probably heard me tell it before, but I don't usually use a name. But being that now he's been here, maybe it'll mean something. Where he was up at Rama uh, Bible School one day, and he was uh, working in healing service, and, and they had one of those services where, where just the power of God, things were happening, people were getting healed, miracles were taking place. He was like, it was so overwhelming to him. It was so exciting. And he ran out of the meeting and he fell on his knees before the Lord. And he just told the Lord, he said, Lord, wow, to just, to just experience that. He said, Lord, I just want an exciting life. I just want an exciting life. How many of us want an exciting life? Come on, we want an exciting life. Everybody, if you didn't raise your hand, just repent for lying right now. Just <laughs> repent. Just repent for lying right now. Nobody wants to say I have, uh, nobody wants to say I want a boring, you may have a boring life, which if you do, it's because you're not doing enough with your faith. But nobody wants to have a boring, that's my testimony is I have a boring life. Well, don't be testifying that. As a Christian, we should have the most exciting and vibrant and thrilling and fulfilling life because we're doing it with God. So as Pastor Jay fell on his knees and was crying out to the Lord about wanting to have an exciting life, the Lord spoke to him. And he told me this. He said, if I have ever heard the voice of the Lord, it was in this moment. He said it was that clear. And he told him, he said, the exciting life is the life of faith. Wow. 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 The exciting life is the life of faith. Hallelujah. We know it. Come on. The Lord said it without faith. We can't please Him, right? But I want to take a real quick little... That was my introduction. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
But just to give you a reminder tonight, since I'm not going to be able to preach the other part of the message, is that our faith works by love. Our faith works by love. Hallelujah. And so if we're going to live a life of faith, if we're going to, if we're going to work our faith, if our faith is going to work, then we're going to have to do it by living a life of love. Faith is what counts first. Faith is what counts. Outward activities don't count. Rituals, routines, that's not what counts. Faith is what counts. And faith is it's motivated by love. It operates through love. It works by love. Uh, the Word of God says that. And when it says love, it means the whole operation of love. Or what I call the full cycle of love. Hallelujah. And so I'm going to tell you very briefly here in just a moment what that cycle is so that you can kind of apply this in your life. But I just want to remind you in talking about love that the Bible tells us that God is love. Okay? So when we look at God, when we look at at His nature and His character, we're looking at love. Okay? When we hear God, when we hear His Word, His instructions, we're hearing love. We're not hearing meanness. We're not hearing strictness. We're not hearing, I can't do this and I can't do that. When you're hearing the Word of God, you're hearing love. Uh, when we see God, when we see His ways, when we see His works, we're seeing Love, And so we could say this, that the closer that we are to the Lord, the closer we are to love. So we could also say this from our side, that the closer that we operate in love, the tighter that we walk in love, then the closer we are to God. Right? So there's this thing about the, the love walk that's so, so important. It's important that we know the love of God, that we can experience the love of God. And so I'm not going to read it tonight because everyone should know it. But 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 8a are kind of a standard. It kind of describes some attributes of love, love being kind. Uh, love not parading itself, being puffed up, doesn't seek its own, doesn't rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Love believes all things, love bears all things, love hopes all things, love endures all things, love never fails. All these things that we're talking about, but many times when we, when we read that, we think of that in relation to uh, just other people. And what I want to just encourage you tonight to just remember that when we're talking about faith working through love, we're talking about it working through the entire operation of love. All right? And so here is the cycle of love that we need to understand. Really because when we examine all of the love scriptures, we need to believe them, we need to apply them, we need to live them in relation to the full operation of love or the full cycle of love, which is this. And I'm going to give you these in an order of one through four because the order matters. Sometimes we say it's just a list and the order doesn't matter. But this really here does matter. The cycle of love is this, number one. You find it here in my... Number one, what we are to know is His love for us. Number one, His love for us. Then we are to live, number two, our love for Him. Then number three, when we're operating and walking in love, for our love to work properly, we have to have love of self. And then number four is love of others. Okay? And so the truth is, is that many times we focus on our love toward God. And we're always talking about our love toward God and how much I love God. It's all about me loving God. It's all about me loving God. When really our greater focus should be God's love for us. The Bible says we love Him because He first loved us. So truthfully, we can't even love God properly. We can't even love God intimately. We can't really love God close up unless we really fully understand God's love for us. 
And when we really understand God's love for us, His goodness toward us, His mercy, His kindness, that's what leads us to repentance. It's what causes us to stay connected with Him. It's His love for us that, that binds us, that glues us together. It's that love that compels us to love Him back. And so a lot of Christians are, are so focused on the love they have toward God, the love they have toward God, the love they have toward God, but really we need to be focusing on how much he loves us. The apostle John called himself the beloved. That's how he saw himself. That's how he, he spoke of himself. Is that how you speak of yourself? Have you ever read, have you ever read the 1 Corinthians chapter 13? And in, instead of looking at it about how you're supposed to be treating other people, have you realized that that's how God is toward you? That God is kind to you, that He never keeps a record of your wrongdoing? That He believes the best about you, that He hopes all things, that He endures long with you? Have you ever read that about yourself towards yourself? See, here's the other thing. We're trying to... And we do. We need to love people. We need to treat people right. But we also have to love ourselves. And really, if you don't know the love of God for yourself, how God loves us intimately, how He loves us passionately, he, he, we're the apple of His eye. He just he thinks so, so wonderful about us. So this is not in a conceited way. But we have to love ourselves through the eyes of God. We have to love ourselves like God loves us. We have to know how valuable we are. We have to know that if there had been no one else in the whole wide world, only you, that God would have sent His Son for you. And because God sent His Son to die for you, therefore He imparted great value to you. So we are, we are highly valuable in the sight of God. We are very valuable. Our worth is immeasurable in the sight of God. How much God loves us. And so because He values us and because He sees us that way, we need to see ourselves that way. And really the truth is we don't pe treat people right or can't treat people right if we don't love ourselves. If we're not able to forgive ourselves, if we're not able to see the good in ourselves, if we're not able to see the potential in ourselves, we really can't love people right. And that's why the Bible says, talking about a husband and a wife, because, you know, a husband and a wife is a, is a picture of God with the church and all of us together. And it says that when, uh, when a man uh, loves his wife like his own body. And so always, always, this is the truth. When someone is abusing someone in a home, when a man is abusing a woman in a home, it's because they don't like themselves. It's really not about the woman. It's about them. It's that they, they haven't, whatever's wrong with them, and they don't like themselves. They don't love themselves. And so they take that out. We see it all the time. I say it. Hurt people hurt people. It's because people are hurt that people hurt people. And so we have to learn not just that God loves us and not just that we're to love God and love others, but we have to learn to love ourselves. Hallelujah. God loves us so much. And so I just wanted to remind us tonight, really I was going to preach the whole thing on the cycle of love, but we got caught up in the being close. It's okay. Hallelujah. But there is this intimate place in this relationship with the Lord that the Lord wants us to be intimate with Him, to come close, to draw ever near, to never, to never feel like we've like we've experienced it all or we've, you know, we've, all of us in here have experienced the presence of the Lord. We've experienced times of things with the Lord. But we have to keep our pursuit, our pursuit to continue to draw near to Him, to go, to go deeper in Him, to go after a, a really intimate, an intimate love. So great, so great is the love of God for us. And it all has to really start there. The intimacy of us, wanting, of us wanting to go after Him because of His love for us. John 3, 16, for God so loved you. Ephesians 2, 4 through 5, God who is rich in mercy because of His great love with which He loves you. Uh, Romans 5, 8, because He demonstrates His love towards you. Jeremiah 33, love, uh, that, uh, Jeremiah 33, 
31.3, because He loves you with an everlasting love and He draws you with loving kindness. Hallelujah. That you're made perfect in love. What manner of love is it that He's bestowed upon us that we would be called children of God, that He would take us as His own. That He would love us like we're the only one. That He would love us so fully and so completely. It's so intimate, this love that God has for us. I'm going to read 1 John chapter 4, verses 9 through 10, and then verse 15 through 16. Turn with me there if you have your Bible. We must understand this love that He has for us. Once we can grasp it, 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 it will produce faith and cause our faith to work. It says, In this the love of God was manifested. Verse 9, 1 John 4. In this the love of God was manifested toward us that God has sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. In this love, listen, in this love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Notice that it was His love toward us that motivated Him to send Jesus. Not, his, not anybody else's love. Not even the old saints that loved him like David loved him, a man after God's own heart. It was not that. It was not the, our love toward him. It was his love toward us that caused him to send Jesus. Verse 15, that whosoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. Notice here that the first thing that we are to do after we confess Jesus is Lord is we are to know and to believe the love that God has for us. It's a very intimate love. It's a very intimate love that we're to know the love of God. Ephesians 3, 17 through 19. Paul prayed that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith. That us being rooted and grounded in love, being rooted the soil in which we grow, being grounded the foundation upon which we build, that we may be able to comprehend, understand, know, and experience with all the saints what is the width, which is boundless, the length, which is endless, the depth, which is fathomless and exhaustless, and the height, which is measureless, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. And that's it. Is that we, as we come close to love, as we come close and intimate with the love of God, knowing the love of God, focusing on the love of God, drawing upon the love of God, that we can be filled with, we get the full effect of who God is because God is love. Thank you for joining Pastors Chaz and Joni today from Houston Faith Church. If you're looking for a good home church in Houston, Texas, we'd like to invite you to be our guest anytime. What you'll find is that Houston Faith Church is highly committed to the Word of God, the love of God, and the Spirit-filled life and ministry that Jesus expects. We know that everyone wants to make a difference in this life, and that the Great Commission of the Lord Jesus Christ is the main thing for all of us. You'll find your purpose here and grow strong in faith at Houston Faith Church. Find more faith-building resources on our YouTube channel or subscribe to our free audio podcast. You can also connect with us on Facebook and Instagram. See you soon.